One Child Nation is a documentary about, as you might get from the title, uh, the one child policy in China. So before we kind of get into it more, I just wanted to say that I think it's a good documentary. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot from it because it's a time period I don't really know a lot about. And it's obviously a policy we've all heard of and that's very prominent. But the actual mechanics and like the nuts and bolts under it, I really didn't know. And aspects of this really shocked me. I mean, like, that's just kind of the thing with China. Um, and I have a whole series about it that's not up on another channel called China Economy Strong, which was making fun of like how sociopathically collectivist the Chinese are. And, like, how they're basically, like, worker bees who are all going to die for, like, the party and to make basically China economy strong. And you get a lot of that in this. But I think this is a very good movie to red pill you on China. Because there's a lot of people who see China as a conservative or based or traditional society or something like that. And I think before you take that too seriously and you adopt this that position... You should really watch this movie because I think it gives you a, a, a pretty good insight as to how China actually functions and what their traditional family values, as it were, actually means. But before we start at the beginning, I just want to start at the end and in kind of the irony of this movie. So this whole movie is like about not just the one child policy, but the culture created in China they talk about how the Chinese people were massively brainwashed to believe things that weren't true. They show like all this state made propaganda, like they had operas, they had kids shows. There's like a kid who I think is rapping at one point. And it's like all this like really over the top propaganda about the one child policy. And there's like signs in all the villages, like if, if a woman has more than one child, we, uh, her whole family will pay the price better to like bleed rivers of blood than have a second child or something. So it's all about that. And she just constantly talks about propaganda and like the closing part of the movie. So the, like the, the person who made it is a Chinese woman who moved to America. And she says, it's ironic, isn't it? That I moved from a country that forces women to have abortions to a country that doesn't allow women to have abortions. And I'm just like, what? I'm just like, but America does. America has no laws on it. God knows people have tried and they, they haven't allowed them to do it. America and Canada have literally the most liberal laws on earth. Um, well, Canada, you can't even say Canada has the most liberal laws because it has no laws. So that's like a demonstrable lie. That's literally taking like the most like low tier propaganda and just repeating it. And then she's like, and but they're really two sides of the same coin. It's about taking away a woman's right to control her reproduction. And it, they're just as bad. I forget if she said that exactly, but that was the implication. I'm like, look, we just watched like two hours like an hour and a half of some of the most horrendous stuff i've ever seen and you're saying america is just as bad because because of a non-existent law that you hallucinated into existence and i i just love how it's like this film about how propaganda is bad and the end is like the lamest low tier transparent propaganda i've ever seen in my life I mean, regardless of how you feel about abortion, saying that the U.S. doesn't allow it is just demonstrably untrue. Anyway, so let's get into One Child Nation. So China adopted the One Child Policy, I believe it was introduced in the early 80s. Apparently before it, there was a two-child policy, and then later it was modified to allow rural families to have a second child five years after the first one. It's all very arcane, but it talks about, they, they go through and they interview a number of people. So like there's one woman who they went to, who's um, like, I don't know if you want to call her a uh, nurse wife or a m matron or whatever, but she, she talked about how she would do uh, 20 sterilizations a day. 
And she said what would happen is the party officials or the local party members would go through the city and just grab women. I guess some I guess mostly they'd grab women who had a child, but sometimes they'd just grab random women and they'd bring them they'd tie them up and bring them to her and she had to sterilize these women who were like tied down to boards and stuff like that. And basically the country um, just said, if we don't do this, then China is going to starve to death in like by 2020 or something to that effect. So that would happen. Or if they found out the party somehow found out a woman was pregnant with a second child, uh, they also arrest her and force her to have an abortion. And a lot of them would happen um, very late term, like eight or nine months in so they would often be born alive and then they'd be put into medical bags and um just kind of thrown in rivers and stuff and there's a photographer who took a whole bunch of pictures of just these medical waste bags with um viable babies in them so that was part of it um if they found you had a second child, they'd, I think, normally, like, destroy your house or something. There was a general culture of intimidation. Um, there was widespread social shaming. All that kind of stuff. So, the Chinese government called it family planning. Where have we heard that phrase before? But, yeah, they called it family planning, and they had a certain number of family planners assigned to different districts. And they were rewarded or punished based on their quotas. So they had to reach a certain number of children within their district. And if they reached that or got under that, then they got rewarded and promoted. If they did worse than their quota, if they, if they had more births than their quota, then they would be punished. So they had to make that up somewhere. And um, I, I'm sure you can see how they would make up that quota. <laughs> lower the quota as it were so then we get into the whole thing about families not wanting daughters and as i said i think there's this idea that like patriarchal cultures inherently hate women and that's generally speaking not the case with um a couple exceptions i'd say like ancient greek culture was like genuinely misogynistic um, I'd say Islamic cultures are to a large extent and I'd say Han Chinese culture is definitely uh, quite misogynistic and I use that term unironically so everybody wants to have a boy in China so if you can only have one child then you want to have a boy so what what was very common what people would do is if they had a girl they'd put her in a basket and they just go leave her somewhere like along the side of the road at a market that kind of thing and like one of the families they interviewed said that they left her at a market and they just watched her die um over the course of two days from dehydration and being stung to death by mosquitoes and they're just like look we had to do it we needed to have a son so we're going to um abandon our daughter to die and uh, I don't know, I'm sure there'll be some like immature people who will like say, oh, it's based, but it, it's not. It's really, it's really disturbing. And so like what would happen is um, people would say you'd go down the street and it wouldn't be uncommon to see three, four, five baskets with like babies in them. And it might not even necessarily be uh, baby girls. Maybe the woman gave a birth to another child. And she wasn't able to abort it or whatever. Or they, or they had heard the government was ticked off. So this just became a very common and widespread practice. So what wound up happening is during the 90s, there was a group of people who would come to the rescue, who would save those children from certain death. And they were human traffickers. So, you know how there's this, like, whole meme, like, the 90s and 2000s, everyone wanted to adopt orphans from China? Well, basically what the Chinese government figured out is to make China economy strong, rather than just killing the babies or leaving them to die of exposure, 
we can get the babies to go to state orphanages and then we can sell them to gullible people in the West and we'll raise a whole bunch of money to help grow China's economy. So like the guy they interviewed um, said what he would do is he would just walk down the street in um, the city he was from and just like with a cart or something and just pick up like babies that had been abandoned there. And he had like a network of like taxi drivers and garbage men and stuff. And as they were like driving around the city, if they saw random babies, it like picked them up and put them in the trunk. And he would sell them to the orphanage in exchange for, um, I think it was like $120 or something. It was a substantial amount of money probably in China at the time. And then what the orphanage would do is they'd fabricate records saying that, oh, this baby was found at this one location. And there were people who were going through the records and it was pretty obvious that they like didn't really care when they were making the records because there was like of the like thousand or something they were looking at, there was only five different locations they gave and it was all written in the exact same way. I think some of it was in order. So it was like, it was like every fifth one was found at this school. Every sixth one was found at this other place. Like they didn't even try and they like paid off the um, police departments to post. There's like a specific newspaper that I don't think was distributed that nobody read. And what they would do is they give the police department photos like missing children photos and on it, it would say claim in the next 60 days or it becomes property of the state. Uh, your child does. So they'd pay off the police force to do that. So there was this like paper trail, but no one really cared that it was a fake paper trail. So then what the orphanages would do is they'd sell them to people in the West. And that would be about ten to twenty thousand dollars. So this became like a major business where there are people who had these large networks whose job was just to go and find like random abandoned babies. And I like how this like human trafficking was actually the like good, the best solution that they like the people could come up with. And I like, I'm sure the money mattered, but some of these people seem like to genuinely have cared like and have wanted to get the babies off the streets they're not dying of exposure and they were saying what, what would eventually happen is when the, the government figured out that this was a way to make china economy strong is they just started sending like police and party officials to like rural communities and just kidnap children i think in particular with twins they would just claim that they weren't actually twins and that the family had two births and they just grab one of them and they take them and sell them to an orphanage. And yeah, there was just like widespread kidnapping of children and that kind of thing. And as I said earlier, like as they go through the movie, they look at all the propaganda and the sheer amount of like propaganda that Chinese are exposed to is amazing. Like all these different like dances like they have like disney like you if you ever go to disney or theme park you know how they have like the shows with like costumes and acrobats and stuff like they produce that and they bring it to various towns like about the one child policy and like they say like it helped to achieve world peace and china would have starved without it i think at one point they say that the program prevented like 300 million births or something like that so I don't know how many, so I don't know what the, I, I haven't seen an actual estimate. I'm not sure if you could really have one, but I think to say that there were probably tens of millions of forced abortions or just state prompted abortions in general. And that between that and the abandoned children who died of exposure and just all the other shady stuff that went on during the time period. I think tens of millions is probably a fairly safe guess. They claim that it prevented like 300 million, but that would include like women who were sterilized and stuff like that. Um, and we can get into that because I mean, obviously like chaining down a woman and like cutting out 
I don't know how they do it if they take out like their ovaries or something. That's obviously like really screwed up on its own. But people talk about stuff like the Holocaust and the Rwandan genocide. And they talk about how can you live in a society that does that. And like, well, in some of those cases, it's a relatively small proportion of the population, like among the uh, central elite who carry out these actions. And it, it didn't go on that long. Like the Rwandan genocide only went on for, I think, about a year or so. I mean, the, the Hutu Tutsi civil war went on re- way, way long. But the actual like machete thing, I don't think went on that long. And I think the final solution was 1941 to 1945 or 1942. It's kind of hard to tell exactly when the Holocaust started. Um, But this went on for 35 years. And this was a policy in which, like, they make pretty clear everybody was involved with this. Pretty much all the local party officials, uh, families would rat out their neighbors. You, you have all these people who are, like, unashamed about the fact that they let their children die of exposure. This was, like, a widespread genocide, pretty much. I mean, I don't know if you want to call it a genocide or a democide or whatever, But it was basically like a major genocide that happened every year for like 35 years in terms of the number of um, like children who are killed. And I mean, I call like what happens in America a genocide of the unborn. But this is kind of like even worse because this is like literally them kidnapping like women and forcibly inflicting it on them. I mean... It's really messed up, but don't, don't don't worry, guys. China's based. When China takes over the world, I think all things will be um will be good. So I just kind of wanted to end off. So kind of the thing you see towards the end of this movie is they're trying to like reconnect the the Chinese orphans with their biological families. Now, it could be I don't know autism or whatever on my point. I don't have autism, but you know what I mean. But to me, if I was in that position and I had been like abandoned as a baby and I was adopted by some kind, some family in America, I don't know how much I would really want to maybe like, I guess maybe know about who my family is in China, but I don't know if I'd like really want to meet them or talk to them. I don't think I really have anything to say with them. And I don't know, like, if I had a brother or a sister and I was, like, 20 and I'd never seen them, if I'd really care if I, like, could talk to them or meet them, like, at that point. Because, I mean, family is blood and family is also um, a spiritual and um, emotional bond. And just because they're your blood doesn't necessarily mean they're your family. Um, so I don't know. I, I can kind of get why like people want to know where they're from and that sort of thing. I don't know how interested I would be, um, in that situation. And I'm sure I'll get some crap for it in the, the comments, but it's just, it's really sad. Um, it's really sad for a lot of different reasons. Um, they, they actually are pretty nice about the the, the families in um, America who adopted the kids. They don't condemn them because they were lied to. Like, they were just told that these, like, their, their parents died and that they're actual orphans, which they aren't. But, yeah, so. That is the tale of based and red-pilled China. So... I hope you found that interesting. God bless. And uh, have a good night.